torpedo that sunk the Chunun and took the lives of 46 South Korean sailors was fired by a North Korean submarine. Homefront, THQ's much buzzed about bid to take on the first person shooter Big Boys, sets up a scary real future fiction scenario. A nuclear weapons wielding North Korea has united with South Korea, overtaken Japan, and crippled the U.S. military with a nationwide EMP blast. Coupled with a severe economic downturn and unexpected spread of a lethal virus, the United States is left vulnerable to occupation by this relentless rising superpower. In the boots of an underdog freedom fighter, players must face this overwhelming threat using whatever resources you can lay your hands on. Glad you're awake. So you take more punishment than a man could live through. <laughs> Back from the dead, huh? While Homefront's concept is refreshingly intriguing, its story falls short. John Milius, director of the similarly themed Red Dawn and co-writer of Apocalypse Now, delivers a flat script starring equally thin characters. The narrative and supporting cast simply don't do enough to leverage the potential of Homefront's rich setup. In a generation that's seen story-driven shooters evolve into the likes of Bioshock and Black Ops, players expect more than one-note storytelling and F-word spewing allies. Fuck you! While we're accustomed to shooters having truncated solo runs, Homefront's campaign feels painfully short by any standard, and it doesn't help that it ends abruptly with a climax that's over-eager to set the stage for a sequel. Thankfully, the campaign effectively serves as the appetizer to an online smorgasbord, where other developers shoehorn in some online options to earn that coveted back-of-the-box bullet point, Chaos Studios justifies its multiplayer modes with innovative thinking and thoughtful execution. Fight harder, comrades! We are almost out of time! The concepts of battle points and the battle commander bring fresh ideas to the standard frag-focused fare. The former feature is a currency earned for kills and completing objectives. Points can be spent in-game on small upgrades such as flak jackets and airstrikes, or you can break the bank in a pre-spawn screen on more serious hardware such as ground and air vehicles. The right choice will depend on the battlefield situation and your mood. The Battle Commander feature layers optional objectives on top of each mode's main goals. Depending on your performance, it may send you on a personal vendetta to eliminate the sharpshooter who's earned his entire kill streak at your expense. Conversely, it could reward the top gun with a perk, such as the ability to see through solid objects, but also put an attractive bounty on his head. Buoyed by unique features, 32-player support, and large-scale battles, Homefront's multiplayer mode excels even though its modes are essentially variations on standard death matches and objective capturing. Welcome to your new home, it's our little piece of America. Opening in a small Colorado suburb, Homefront's campaign starts strong. Assuming the role of an ex-military pilot, players are dragged from their apartment by enemy soldiers. Why are you so reluctant to serve your country in its time of need? And shackled into a repurposed school bus. From this perspective, Homefront effectively sets the stage for its emotionally charged, often disturbing gameplay. Wait! Hold your <laughs> by the time you're broken free by the local resistance movement, your trigger fingers throbbing instinctively alongside your broken heart. Soon enough, you're recruited into the resistance and scoring headshots and blowing up gas stations in true FPS fashion. The actual gunplay is pretty standard stuff, so if you've peered down the iron sight, lobbed grenades, or sprinted to cover in any number of other shooters, you'll feel comfortable behind the controls. You'll also wait for baddies to pop their heads up, melee evildoers in the face, and run like hell when that familiar grenade icon flashes on screen. Hopper! Where's Goliath? Out back! The sole exception to the expected lock and load mechanics is the Goliath, a drone-like vehicle that packs some impressive screen-clearing attacks. Players don't directly pilot these death-dealing sidekicks, but they do use a remote mobile scope to pull the trigger on selected targets. Homefront plays it surprisingly safe in terms of mechanics, setting itself up for unflattering direct comparisons to the best of the best within a genre. Familiarity isn't always a downside, however, and the logical and functional operation does allow players to easily step in and get the job done. Coming right at him! 
While Homefront's visual palette is a little drab and its texture is sometimes muddy, its enemies on our soil aesthetic continually reminds us we're literally fighting this war in our own backyards. Set pieces and scripted events supported by chilling imagery are well placed throughout. Whether stealthily navigating a high school athletic field turned detention camp, exchanging fire from behind the broken fuselage of a jet downed by an EMP, or witnessing a bulldozer dump bodies into a mass grave, the presentation is rarely less than absorbing. Lie down. What? Lie down! Homefront also uses real-world brands to great effect. Where a full-throttle vending machine might look like intrusive in-game marketing in another title, here it serves as a stark reminder that we're fighting on our turf. Of course, it doesn't hurt that the energy drink dispenser is overturned and providing cover from a storm of hot lead. Engaging in combat in a Hooters parking lot and seeking refuge in an abandoned White Castle similarly help firmly place the battle in Middle America. We're not just fighting for our freedom in Homefront, we're fighting for our God-given right to gorge on buffalo wings served by buxom waitresses. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. Complemented by absorbing environments and evocative imagery, Homefront's presentation succeeds in immersing players in its plausible nightmare. Sadly, a weak script, unremarkable gameplay, and a short campaign undermine much of the promise in solo play. Thankfully, the war online, supported by the battle points and battle commander systems, adds considerable value to the total package. It's a bit light on modes, but if THQ can keep the pipeline flowing with post-launch content, Homefront could potentially draw a few recruits from Call of Duty's front lines. Good work, everyone.